I kept this secret for 50 years. Not NASA, not my wife, no one knew. What I saw on the moon, it wasn't on any geology map. It wasn't in the mission plan, and it had no reason to be there. It moved, deliberately. It cast a shadow. And it saw me too. Who would believe a seasoned astronaut claiming to see something impossible? But now, before I take my last breath, you need to know. What I saw was real. Charles Duke, Apollo 16's lunar module pilot and one of the youngest men to ever walk on the moon, breaks a silence that has haunted him since 1972. He says he saw something on the lunar surface that did not fit the mission plan, the geology maps, or even the rule book of human spaceflight. What did he witness? Why did he stay quiet? And is there footage to back it up? If you've ever wondered whether the moon still guards secrets, this is the confession you've been waiting for. When Apollo 16 was greenlit, NASA knew this mission had to go beyond flag planting and rock collecting. The earlier Apollo missions had already shown that humans could survive, work, and return from the moon. But Apollo 16 carried a deeper goal, one that could rewrite the lunar origin story. Scientists hoped that by reaching the rugged lunar highlands, never before visited by astronauts, they could crack open the timeline of the moon's formation and possibly shed light on Earth's ancient history. While most previous landings touched down on the smoother Maria, the highlands were a different beast, older, rougher, and filled with craters and boulders. The Descartes Highlands, Apollo 16's target, had never been explored. Some believed it was formed by volcanic activity, Others thought it was remnants of ancient, cataclysmic impacts. NASA was betting big on one mission to settle the score. But it was risky. The terrain was uneven, the descent window narrow, and the fuel margin for error razor thin. Even a slight miscalculation could cause the lander to tip, sink, or crash. The mission had to be flawless, because future moon missions were already under budget pressure. Apollo 16 could be the last shot to prove the science was worth the cost. Charles Duke, the lunar module pilot, was under immense pressure. At just 36 years old, he was the youngest person to walk on the moon, and he had something to prove. His earlier involvement in the Apollo 13 backup crew had led to Ken Mattingly's removal due to illness. Something. Duke carried with him his guilt. Apollo 16 was his second chance, and he wasn't going to waste it. The crew, John Young, Charles Duke, and Ken Mattingly, was an unusually balanced team. Young, the seasoned commander, had flown on Gemini and orbited the moon in Apollo 10. Duke brought youthful energy and stubborn resilience. Mattingly, now reinstated, orbited solo in the command module Casper while his colleagues descended. Their training was exhaustive. Endless geology trips, mock landings, disaster simulations, and lunar rover exercises. They drilled for every scenario, except for the one Duke would later describe. On April 20th, 1972, the lunar module Orion made its descent. It was tense. The Descartes Highlands looked worse up close than from orbit. Slopes, shadows, and unexpected boulders turned the descent into a white-knuckle ride. With minimal fuel left, Young managed a stable landing. Duke stepped onto the surface with awe, but the clock was ticking. Every minute on the moon was a race against oxygen, battery life, and human endurance. They unloaded gear, set up the ALSEP science package, planted the flag, and began their planned traverses. Then came the rover. For the first time in history, astronauts could drive across the moon. The vehicle gave them reach, but also risk. They ventured miles from Orion across ridges and into unknown terrain. It was on one of those drives that it happened. While the rover paused and dust settled, something flickered past the edge of Duke's visor. A dark shape, quick, low to the ground. At first, Duke assumed it was a reflection or dust. But the movement was too fast, too intentional. He said nothing. Inside the lunar module later, the image haunted him. He replayed it over and over. Could it have been a trick of light? Duke had been trained to dismiss distractions and focus on mission objectives. There was no protocol for unexpected moving object. So he buried it. For decades, he told no one. He assumed it was a figment of his imagination. Until he found the footage. 
Years later, Duke revisited archived Apollo 16 rover footage. And in one grainy clip, there it was, a fast, dark shape darting across the surface. It cast a shadow. It matched the moment he remembered. It was bigger than he thought, perhaps the size of the rover itself. Duke froze the frame. Was this vindication or confirmation of something he didn't want to believe? NASA footage is always under scrutiny. And anomalies are often dismissed. Film defects, light flares, lens smudges. But this was different. It moved with intention. It had mass, shadow, and trajectory. Still, Duke hesitated to speak. Astronauts don't talk about shadows. They talk about geology, thrust vectors, and oxygen tanks. Anything else risks their reputation. But with time, Duke grew older. His need for precision gave way to a need for honesty. He told the story publicly. Not as proof of alien life, not as a dramatic revelation, but as a personal truth he could no longer carry alone. He said, Before I take my last breath, you need to know what I saw. And then he described it. A dark shape, a fast movement, a moment of confusion. The confession rippled through the space community. Some dismissed it as fatigue or imagination. Others saw it as vindication for long, whispered theories. Still others wanted more. Was there more footage? Had other astronauts seen similar things? Were there logs that had been redacted or data that had been quietly ignored? Duke never claimed it was alien. He never claimed it was hostile. The Apollo 16 mission remains one of the most successful science missions ever conducted on the moon. The team returned with Highland rock samples that reshaped our understanding of lunar geology. But beyond the rocks, drills, and seismometers, there was a moment no checklist predicted. A blink, a shadow, and a man who carried it for 50 years. The footage is still there. The frame still exists. And Charles Duke's voice now joins it, not as a scientist with proof, but as a witness to the unexplainable. In the end, maybe that's the point. The moon is not finished telling its story. And neither are the men who walked upon it. If you want deeper dives like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. What do you think Duke saw? Optical illusion? Hidden artifact? Or something that doesn't fit our understanding yet? And when you're ready for another strange mystery with hard data and human witnesses, watch the next video on screen. We've lined up another moment where everything changed with one frame.